Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Vimal Singh and in this particular video we will see how data loss prevention policy will protect your endpoints. So if any user is trying to leak your sensitive information from their endpoints, how DLP will come into the picture and protect your sensitive data. So as usual, first we are going to explore the logical concept of it and then we will move towards the practical implementation. So let's get it started. Okay, so let's first understand what exactly DLP is for endpoints. So you can think this endpoint DLP as a security guard that works right on your laptop. And that laptop can be either Mac or the Windows. It also includes a server, but not all the feature the way it is supporting for Windows and Mac operating system. So basically it keeps an eye on files that contain your sensitive data, like credit card number or the personal information. And it stops you from accidentally leaking your sensitive information. For example, if you try to upload a confidential client list to a random website, the DLP can block you and warn you before it happens. Now let's see how these files are being classified at, uh, uh, you can say, at your endpoint using DLP. So it has similar approach like file scans, and you can say file scan will take place with the help of policy that we have created. Um, it will identify your sensitive data, then recheck when opened in DLP policy. Is there any change happen or not? And we must have this sensitive information type and label which is already created. So every time you create or edit a file, the DLP takes a quick X-ray to check for sensitive data. So if rule changes later, it rechecks file when you open them. For example, if your company adds a new rule to protect passport numbers, next time you open a file with one, it will trigger the DLP policy. Now let's talk about what are the devices are being supported at this place. So you can see, as we already talked about it, Windows 10 and Mac operating systems are supported. And as I said, it supports to some extent your server operating system, but not all the features. For example, if I'm protecting our devices, so a MacBook in the marketing team can have the same protection rule as a finance team that they are using Windows PC. Now let's see what are the activities can be controlled through this DLP policy on your endpoint. So here is the list you can see. These are the primary lists that you have. You can think of all the possible way that you may have on your endpoints related to your file. What user can do? They may try to send and send the file over the email. Maybe they'll try to put it in a USB stick or any external uh, storage connected to it. Um, maybe from printing, they're trying to get hard copy of your sensitive files. They'll try to copy and paste it in somewhere else. Or even if they have Bluetooth connectivity, they'll try to send those files over the Bluetooth. So this endpoint DLP can watch and control it. For example, if you plug in a USB drive and try to copy payroll data, DLP might block it or ask you to justify why. So here's the list that you can see. Let's understand the scoping and policy uh, for DLP for endpoint. So you can aim DLP policy like a snipper, targeting only certain people and devices. It depends on your requirement. So for example, a rule that blocks exporting credit card number might only apply to finance team laptops, not market, marketing team. So we do have option. Also, we have option to set the actions. Do I need to block it or just give the warning or we want to do the auditing on it? So later we can, on the basis of those audit, we can set the policy. Now, even without internet, the DLP can enforce their old rules. So just-in-time protection is like putting a hold on a file. You can't send it out until the system finishes checking. This is handy if you create a new confidential report on a plane. It won't leak before the company can scan it. So you can consider works offline with existing policy. As I discussed, just-in-time blocks egress activities until the file evaluation completes and it helps you to stop leaks while waiting for DLP to decide. Now, the file types which is which can be protected, as you can see, most of the file types are being supported. So DLP focus on file where sensitive data is likely stored, like documents, your Excel sheet, PDF files, or even code files. With OCR, if you remember, we had a discussion, 
will help you to read the text from the image as well. So it scans the image. If that image contains any sensitive information, it will identify from there. But it ignores executable files like software installer and other thing because the installers cannot contain your sensitive data at this place. Okay, so I hope you got an idea what exactly and how exactly this DLP protects your endpoints and what can be protected. Let's see how we can configure it practically. Okay, so let's see how we are going to use Microsoft Purview and DLP protection policy to protect our endpoint or you can say devices. So first, we need to find or identify the sensitive data. And as we know, to find the sensitive data, we have sensitive info type, which is already created by Microsoft. So for that, we will go to the data classification and there you will find the sensitive info type. If I'll go to that place, as we already talked about it, these are the uh, sensitive information type, which is already created by Microsoft. And it is designed to detect your sensitive data as per their pattern and the keywords. Now, there is a search box. If you are looking for a specific kind of sensitive item, then you can search for it directly from here. As you can see, as I search for license, I'm getting all the SIT, means sensitive info type, which will identify the licenses. Depends. Each country will have their own licensing pattern. That is the reason we are getting multiple sensitive info type just for one, uh, you can say, requirement. Now, to use this uh, on the end point, we must create the DLP policy. So for that, we will go to data loss prevention because we want to protect it on the endpoint device. So first we will go to the DLP settings. If I'll go inside the DLP setting, there we are getting the DLP setting that will protect your endpoint. If you can see here at this place, it clearly says this settings apply to all existing and new DLP policy that protect content on endpoint. And this endpoint will have Windows operating system or Mac operating system. Currently, these two operating systems are being supported. As you can see, we got multiple options at this place. I mean, multiple settings. Now, if you can go and check it out, advanced classification, scanning and protection. If I'll expand it, there it clearly says when you are going to turn it on, the setting will help you or allow the Microsoft 365 cloud-based data classification service to scan items, classify them and return the result on the local devices. So this is for the endpoint. Now let's turn it on. As you know, this policy belongs to cloud. We create, we are creating it on a cloud service and the scanning has to take place on on-premises. So definitely bandwidth is going to be one key point that we need to keep in our mind. So at this place, the moment you turn it on, we need to allocate bandwidth limits. So if you have limited bandwidth, you can control it by specifying this and your DLP policy will use only this much of bandwidth. But there, if it reaches out to the specified bandwidth, it will stop scanning. That is very important. And this service has to be running in a 24 hour period. So you must be careful about that. If you don't have any bandwidth constraint in your environment, in that case, you can go with do not limit the bandwidth, go with unlimited option. It depends how much bandwidth you have and what kind of limitation you have. Now, if I'll go to the next part, here we have file path exclusion for Windows and similarly file path exclusion for Mac. It depends what you are protecting. So if I'll go and expand it, there we are getting this option to exclude, set the exclusion path. For example, if I'm not interested to scan this particular location, we are going to add it. Not interested to scan this temporary files, we'll add it. Unnecessary, it is not going to scan and use or misuse my bandwidth. Now, similarly, we will do it for the, uh, you can say Mac operating system, but that's not our requirement in this scenario. We are going to test it on Windows. So let's go with the Windows operating system. Now, the next point is restricted app and app groups. Let's expand it. And if you read it to understand what exactly it does, it clearly says control the level of access that a specific apps have the sensitive content, which is detected by the DLP policies. So we are going to create a group of app to enforce different access restrictions for each group or add apps individually to one list to apply the same restrictions to them all. So to create it, let's scroll it down. And there we are going to create a restricted app group. 
And here we will specify the group name and there we are going to define the application wherever we want to enforce this policy. Like Notepad, we will have Notepad++, maybe any other like Evernote and save it. So we got it. You, you may have more than this. It's not mandatory. As you can see, we have few more like check, uh, Dropbox, WhatsApp, Wood Group. There are many. It depends what application you think like there would be some sensitive information or that application is using. You can put it at this place. Now we have browser and domain restrictions to sensitive data. At this place, what we are going to do will control our browsers. So what it says, restrict sensitive file that match your policies from being shared with unallowed browsers and service domains. And to do that, we are going to add or edit existing ones. So here you can see we have too many browsers. We are going to select Firefox and internet browser, and we are going to exclude that. So any unallowed browsers will be blocked from this accessing file protect, uh, which is protected from the policies. And one thing that we need to note at this place that Microsoft is and Google Chrome are supported in Microsoft or you can say endpoint uh, and DLP policy, but provided the Microsoft PooView extensions has been installed on user's device then only. Let's save it. Now we have domain exclusion as I mean domain uh, setting as well. So we'll go to that place and specify the domain. There we have dropbox.com. And as you can see, it says what when this policy upload to cloud service domain or across the unallowed browsers settings is turned on and a browser attempts to upload protected file to this cloud service domains from Microsoft Azure or Google Chrome, where as we discussed, this extension is installed. So then it will actively will be either allowed, blocked, or you can say blocked, but we can give the right to the user to override this permission. It depends on what setting you have configured for it. So let's add it. Now let's collapse it. So we did some setting related to the DLP for the endpoints. Now we are going to create the policy. So at this place, we'll go to the policy section. Here we are going to create the DLP policy. As we already talked about, we do have a predefined, uh, you can say DLP policy created. Either we can go and check it out financial and there we have many predefined DLP policy available uh, finance related. For example, if I will go and check finance data there, it will detect credit card numbers, bank account numbers, US bank account number, AVA routing numbers and so on. Similarly, we have some DLP policy created with the health medical and health organization. And there you can see it will protect such kind of sensitive data. Similarly, we have privacy and custom which we have already tested in last video how we are going to create the custom dlp policy in this particular session we will check it out the uh, one which is already created so we'll go to the enhanced and there randomly let's pick us personally uh, identifiable information pii and what exactly it is going to protect so business hr us individual taxpayer identification number or maybe social security number us or uk passport number a user full name or the employee full name or their physical address all this information will get protected so let's go to next button as we are taking the predefined uh, you can say policy so name and description is already there if you want to change it definitely change it name as we already discussed you must define the name as per your requirement because name cannot be changed later description can be changed later now we'll go to the next now here we are getting the location whatever uh, you want to protect i mean where your sensitive information is we have already seen in previous how we are going to protect microsoft uh, office 365 but in this particular session we are trying to test it on device so let's turn off all the other location except devices so first we are going to turn it off sharepoint exchange onedrive everything except our devices there as you can see right now it will the policy will apply to all devices or we can go and choose a specific user or group related devices so let's cancel it now go to next go with the all as we have taken the predefined, so all this sensitive info type is listing at this place and we will use that one only. Next, next, this is protection action. So as you can see what it says, if I have enabled this one, it will keep sending you the notification. 
And also, this is kind of threshold that you're going to set. If it detects sensitive information just one time or more than one time, then it should take action. Let's change it and make it just one. Also, we can customize the alert configuration, how the alert will get generated and what it should generate or that thing we can do it at this place. Like send alert every time an activity matches the rule or is there any threshold that you would like to set at this place. Let's go to next. There we have two options. Restrict access or encrypt the content in Microsoft 365 location or you want to do it on a device. In our scenario, definitely we are looking how to protect on a device. So we will go with this option. If, if you enable this option, you will do it at a Microsoft 365 level on their application level. So let's not go with that. Let's go with this option. And there you can see service domain and browser activities. At this place, it says whenever it detects some someone is uploading, uh, so it will restrict the domain or the browser, which is not allowed to be. So there we can go and select block. So it will immediately block it. Means action or policy would be blocked for this. Now, similarly, if you can see, we have for act file activity for all application. And there you can see if someone is trying to copy the clipboard, if it has detected some sensitive information matches there, then what should be the action? Block. Similarly, if someone is trying to copy into the removal USB device, that should be blocked. Copy to the network share. There we are giving block and overwrite. We already know what exactly it is. Means if I selected this option, by default it will block, but at the same time it will give the override option to the user. And it depends on the user sense that if they feel like, okay, uh, it's still it is sensitive and it's mandatory to share with them so they can override the policy and go with the sharing. Similarly, if I want to block the print, so we are going with the block and block and override for copy or moving using unallowed Bluetooth app, block it. Now copying to RDP, audit only. And similarly, if you can see there, we have a restricted apps activity and we can check it out for that. So here we can go and set the application. All the editing application would be there. And what we are going to say, apply the restriction to all activity and all activity will be block related to that application, all editing application. Now, we can also set it for, as you can see, on-premises files and other settings we have for non-Microsoft applications that can also be done at this place. Let's go to next, and we are going to turn this policy right away. Submit, and there we go. Policy got created. Once this policy got created, now question comes, hey, how it will reach out to device? Where is the device? So now what we will do, we'll go to the settings. Here we have device onboarding. We'll go to that place. You need to turn it on. By default, the device onboarding is off. So we'll go to this place and turn it on. Once you have turned it on, you need to refresh the page. Let's refresh it. And now you will experience this console. There we are getting this onboarding section. And you will have similar experience if you have already experienced the um, defender for endpoints. We are getting the same approach. So what do you want? You want to protect your Windows 10 or Mac operating system. You're going to select that one. And then you will have the deployment methods, means uh, how it will reach out to that place. So either uh, you can go with local script, so it will generate the script that you can download and execute on the device that you would like to onboard. But this is not recommended for the large or enterprise level because it supports up to 10, that's a recommendation. Apart from that, you can use the group policy if you have enterprise level or system center configuration manager, any other mobile device management like Intune that you are using, or if it is VDI, then VDI based integrations. So all this you can do depends on your requirement. And then finally, your devices will get onboarded. As you can see, all these devices will get listed to that place. And now it will get protected with the policy that we have created. OK, so I hope you understand how this DLP protects our endpoints. So thank you so much for watching and see you in next.